Tobago and Port Spain. We also have a tournament every 31st of that August. Yeah, that way part now. Every 31st of August is how that thing. Right? Jan, please introduce yourself. My name is Jan Stedman. Born and grew up in San Fernando. Part of a twin sister named Janice. A family of 10. Five boys, three girls, mother and father. Live at Forno Street. Attended Yulin Private School in Bertrand Street as a youth. Attended St. Benedict's College. Government, San Fernando Government School. Then I went to SDA, San Fernando, Seventh day Adventist. Southern Academy for one term and then to Benedict's. In those days, you will take the exam, which is still going on, to enter the school, which I did. And from there, I started off my career in football. I was always a guy who loved football. I started playing at a very early age with guys like Frankie Herwood, Carper, Glenn Carper. These were guys who were much older than me. They were older than me. Wilton Jackson's brother, which was Ralph. And these are the guys who tried to mold me as a youth in playing. I met in um, San Fernando Government School at the age of 10. I was in Standard 3, 10 or 12, somewhere there, Standard 3. And then I moved on to St. Benedict's College after attending to, um, SDA. At St. Benedict's College, I started playing for the under 14 team. I was vice captain at the time. I played there until I was under 16. I played for the under 16 team. And then I graduated to the senior team. Fortunately for me, I was so happy when I made the team against St. Mary's. I played against players like Vivian Manswell and Jeff Chelino. These were guys who were playing with St. Mary's senior team. They were all playing in the Port of Spain League. My first encounter with Benedict's team was an evening. I was told to bring my gears for a training session in the park by August Wooter. That was a Tuesday. He told me that. The Thursday now, I was sent home for dues. Dues? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't pay my dues. My mother couldn't pay. It was three, three of us, school fees, yeah. Okay. They call it dues. Three of us was going to Benedict's at the time. So I told them, I said, look, pay for my bigger brother and the youngest one, I will hold out. And that was the morning they sent me home. But the Friday I was invited to come to play, I didn't know, walk in my boots to Skinner Park. I went down to Skinner Park. And there it is. The whole of St. Benedict's team was there with guys from Presentation, Naparima, Irie College. I was amazed. What's going on? They pick a team. They put me on the team with the Irie guys and the Presentation and Naparima guys. And we started playing. But remember, I was still at home. Okay, we played. Benedict beat us up. Saturday morning, now I'm getting ready to go to Scout Rally. That time we used to use the train and jump up on the train, jump off, jump off, and they stop. Scout Rally? Yeah, Scout Rally. Like jamboree? Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't a jamboree. We used to go to um, um, St. Anne's. We used to have a big... Oh, by the headquarters? By the headquarters. Yeah. Everybody do the display or whatever. Mm -hmm. And... I was getting ready to go there. Yeah. And there it is, I saw a guy named, a goalkeeper named 
Carl Husham. He was also a runner with Brooklyn. He came down and he said, Jan, you got to get ready. I said, for what? They go in, in school. They want in school. But I know they had a game against St. Mary's that evening. And then he took out the guardian and he showed me. I said, well, maybe I want to sub or something like that. So I said, well, all right. I'm glad for that. I only started in 11. You know how that felt? So I got ready and we went down to school. And we were down on the pavilion. Not knowing that Uta had picked the team while I was outside. While I was home, I, you know, and he, he talked to Don Basil and Duna, Bunal Dean, Yuna Dean and these people about the team. And they said, no, not me. I am too small. <laughs> Uta told them, no, football don't go by, by age and size. He can play. I went on, I went there. I could remember saying down in Benedict's, on, on, the, on the ground, and when Bobby Sukram, I knew all the guys in Benedict's team, but they didn't know me, because I was a junior player. When Bobby Sukram came, the first thing he, he mentioned in the ground is that, who is John Steadman? So I stood up, and he watched me, and he shake and he come and shake my hand. And we went and we played the game. We lost to St. Mary's, won nothing. That was apex. At the end of the game, we had um, a luncheon at a dinner at Chuck's restaurant. I don't know if you remember Chuck's restaurant down. Um, yes, at Four West. No, that is on um, Penitent Street, coming down Penitent Street, Chuck yeah. restaurant. Yeah. Hey, and it's the first time I seen things like eggs with those things in it, fried chicken noodles and you know we didn't so buy that my mother couldn't afford that yeah, yeah, yeah. so i was like in heaven yeah. <laughs> you understand i had a ball after you now we played this the, the whole team went on to play for college league we represent south we won everything and at the end of that now we had the end of season party Hotel Normandy. Port of Spain. Port of Spain. And these are sound players? Yes. Wow. Right? So we went up there. I could remember the guys seeing me all in, in, our, in our blazer. Green blazer with yellow piping and white pants. And I remember the guy in the bar saying, you see those guys there? No whiskey for them or nothing like that. They are schoolboys. So I got up, I went to the bar, and I told the guy, I said, hey, here what's happening. I never tasted that before. I see my father drinking it, but he never gave us it. I would like to take a taste. So what he did, he threw out some whiskey, and then he threw out um, juice. So I was drinking orange juice and whiskey. Nobody knew that. <laughs> you know? So from that, you know, I watched that. And then... I remember going, we played um, Mal no, not Malik, it was um, Belmont Intermediate. And there we played them in, in Uwe Grung, and we beat them 2-1. And this guy named Franco came up to me, and he said, youth man, you will be a future star in this place, you know? So I look at him, he said, boy, the way you playing, you know? And then, well, okay, we came and we made Trinidad team after. We went on with the college boys, Archie Ball. Well, after they left, Archie Ball and Dillian, and Archie Ball, Dillian, Dick Fulong, Kenny Joseph, Wilfred Cave, they came on board. Because, you know, we had to keep that momentum going. So we went to Suriname, we went to, to um, Barbados, we even went as far as Martinique. In Martinique now, they took us to a place the night after we reached to eat. When we go on into this restaurant and the guy opened the fridge, we seen chicken with feathers on still. Not clean or nothing, in the freezer, we got a, a soup to drink, a fish broth. 
So we were so hungry looking to drink scales in the fish world. We said, no, we can't handle this. What country? That's Martinique. Martinique? Yeah. Caribbean? Yeah. So what um, Don Basil, the sees Don Basil there, they say, look, he had to do something about that. So the school we were staying in, it was a Trinidad woman. Her husband was the principal, and she was from Trinidad. Her husband was from Guyana, this Indian lady, East Indian lady. And they decided, look, we will do cooking for you. And they used to cook for us, mm -hmm. right? And they will send Dillion for the bread. And Dillion will be coming like these people. They used to have the bread under the arm. And we'd be looking at Dillion coming like this, you know, with this bread under his arm. You yeah. say, hey, you, 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 you pick up the people and them thing already, boy. And we used to kick so that, you know. And that was fun. I remember um, St. Augustine girls. They were there out there. They were doing some maybe and learning French or whatever. Martinique is French. And they were there. I remember Kapil, they were daughter. They, they were the only two used to talk to us. <laughs> the rest of the girls didn't mellow with us. You know? And we all stayed in the same place. I remember that after that, now we came and the three of us made the national team. Archibald Dillon and myself. Cummins was from Fatima. We went to Jamaica. And we played in the CONCACAF tournament. And while we were in Jamaica, news came out to us that, hey, Archibald and Cummins going to Atlanta to play professional football. What is that? You know, we, you know. Professional? Yeah. What does that mean? Professional football, you know. Then they told us after they break it down that like, had scouts and they watching. But it had men like Connell and them playing with our team, but they didn't look at them. They were like maybe the age. They were looking for younger guys. We were like 19. Teacher. Yeah, 19, 17. I don't know about nine, 18, 19, all around that age. When we, we, we came second in the tournament, so we had to go to, um, forgetting the country, we had to go to play the finals, but we didn't go. Cummins went. For what reason, I don't know. But when we reached Trinidad now, we returned home. I remember the guy from, um, he was one of the guys, he used to run sports and game, Andrews. He's the man who was in charge of sports and game. He was a big man in SFL, in the football association down there. And he came, they came to meet us something. And he told me, say, hey, you and Dillian going to New York. What? That was something else, you know, like, my brother was in New York already, my bigger brother, so it was like, hey, going home. And then Don Basil, no, the eldest one, he died already about two years ago, the eldest one, that Reginald, he went to Benedict's too, but he, did, he used to play a little football, nothing big. And we said, okay, we're going to New York, but then Don Basil, no, this is, he said, since... New York could take two. They might as well take three. Mm. So he went and he negotiated with them for Archie to, to come back to New York. They whole Archie ended up going to New York with us. So three of us ended up in New York. And Cummins alone went to Atlanta. And after it was history, you know. After my career up there, I played with New York Generals two seasons. Then the team falling. You know, the people wasn't coming out as so the, the, the team sort of like went kind of bang. So it was only two seasons we played. I returned home in 79, no, that was 68, at the end of 68. And then I returned to the States in 69. Yeah, I came and I played with juniors. Sports club in San Fernando. I played with them for a couple of years. And then, boom, 69, I left and I went back to the States. And I was responsible for Archibald and Dillian coming back up because I told them, hey, those guys are in Trinidad doing nothing. So they sent for them because I was playing. That time I had a hernia operation. So I couldn't do nothing. I just went and made sure that, hey, these guys are back up here. Then I spoke about Wuta. So then Wuta end up in New York also. 
he ended up in Philadelphia. I got his first job for him in Philadelphia. He never forget me for that. Twice I got jobs for him. After he spent a little while in Philadelphia, I got a next job for him after that. So he always had that for me, John, Jan, Yan, he's called me Yan. Yeah. And he, we taught him English, because he, he didn't know much English. We taught him English enough to understand us, and we could understand him. And then from that, after my operation, I called on um, Archibald and Dillian were playing with, 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 with Bruce and Grell. They were playing with um, Bison, I think that was Lincoln Phillip was coaching that team in Washington, yeah. And I remember that um, I call him in the evening, in the morning, and I say, Lincoln, I want to play with your team, and I want to try out. And his word to me was, do you think you, oh, he said it, are you as good as before? I just hung up the phone on him. You understand? And the next year, I went, we, a pioneer, I was one of the founders of um, New York Cosmos. I played for New York Cosmos. It was the first time they coming out because General was out, and even Cosmos came in today. I played with them. Then I started going to Brooklyn College. So I had to finish off with the soccer. I decided, look, let me go and get some education. I went to Brooklyn College, and I obtained my bachelor degree in physical education. But during that spell, I went back and tried out again with Cosmos. Mm -hmm. And I was the only person they picked from the tryout. Yeah. But they didn't call me at all. When I asked them, hey, what's going on? I called from my um, head office. They said they're done in Miami training. So they left me out. And I knew why. Because what happened is most of the guys who came from England, they were not straight. Well, most of us, we just had an H-1 visa allowing us to work. And these coaches and them, they're from England. So they went for their people. They make sure they get straight. But they didn't know I have gotten my green card already. They didn't know. And they didn't ask nothing, so I left it like that. Then I started coaching Mega Rivers College while I was in Brooklyn College. I coached them. And they were doing well. The first time I, I, I um, experienced, I had a lot of experience over there. We're going to play a game up, it's Catskill, right up in the, in, in the countryside. And half time we lead in 2 1. And second half is a whole fresh team come out of players. I want to know what's going on. The, what, what? But then that was America way. Yeah, when we only changed Yeah, they, they changed the whole team. Yeah. But that only happened in the, in the lower division. You know, I think it still goes on in the lower division. You know, because remember they tried to, st to, 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 to get away from the English so much. They tried to change up everything. Even the soccer, they wanted to make it no outside and thing, you know. Things just hitting off and coming back. See, well, they want to kill people, you know. It never materialized because FIFA won't allow that. That's why they call it soccer instead of football, yeah. you know. And their football is more football, you know, sir? Then I went to Brooklyn College and I got my degree. I came home after that. And I started working at St. Benedict's College. Yeah, I don't know, yeah. I sent guys out for scholarship. Started it. I started it first in New York when I was coaching um, Finn Bego, a team, yeah. Well, Sonata Silban started off as a football team. You know? Really? Right? I was coaching them. I forgot the name we were carrying. And that's why I got injured. Playing for them, we were playing against a team called Trinbego from Santa Cruz. Most of the people were Santa Cruz people. But I know if I'm playing professional, I'm fit. They couldn't pass me. My team wasn't that good, but I was a tower in the back. And this guy just up on me and hit me a kick just so, man. Yes, I put a ball out for a throw, and that was it. The injury came on. I stopped playing for a while. And then Sonata still won form from that. Right? Randolph Henry, the guy Hen Hillier was the guy who started off the whole thing. And then I came home now, after that, I came home in 79. 
the end of 79, my wife, um, I really was supposed to go and work with Jack Warner, Harold Taylor, and um, Bain. They were at Polytechnic. But Bain discovered me. He knew me. I didn't know him. But when he came to New York, he met me. He had a team called Phoenix that we went touring with. Cummins was the coach. Sellers Figaro was playing, Steve David, you know, Ron Laffrey. It was a nice team. Headley, Boxill, guys from Malvern, you know. And we were doing um, New Ellen, Sammy New Ellen, Cleveland Mendes, even Stuart Charles, who is connection coach now. He was on the team too, Favier. You understand? And the team was going good, but what happened? Things wasn't in place. We had to go to Panama and all these places, and apparently the person who was in charge of that didn't did a good job. So we had to return. So I told him I, I was manager player. So I told Futsa, I said, look, back to Trinidad, you know. We can't be spending all this money, and you know we ain't making back nothing, things like that. Because we went to Colombia. Even Crapo was playing with us, too. That is um, Tony Douglas, great player. Yeah. I remember in Bogota, we going to Meta, and we have to go up into the clouds and down. It was scary. Three hours, you standing up and you're watching, and Crapo asking the guy, um, the driver, hey, we had to go through. He said, yes, we had to go up. And go. <laughs> it was scary. Next morning, we reached down there about three in the morning, something like that. And it's like we were in Trinidad. Seeing Blue Jean, Kiskadi, Kobo. You swear you're in Trinidad. That's in Colombia itself. Eh? That is Meta. So we opened a tournament there. We opened a stadium there too. We drew. They gave us a trophy to keep. And then when we went to Costa Rica now, problems. Problems. I said, look, home for us. They said, I'd right, be going home. And when we reached the Miami now, I just hit back to New York, and the team came to Trinidad. I went back to New York, I met my family and them, and then I decided, look, I spent a little while again, and I came down, came back home, started teaching athletics. I was really supposed to, like I say, polytechnic. But when I went to teaching commission, they told me, they say, hey, no school me come looking for you. They didn't know I had a school already. So since they tell me that, I say, oh yeah, I took advantage. I didn't want to travel to Port of Spain every day. That is madness. When I see the traffic going to Port of Spain, I say, look, I always say people going to Port of Spain is mad people. That's how I look at it, because I couldn't take that traffic every morning. You understand? So I went to Benedict's, and there was an opening there. And that's how I brought back football in Benedict's. I rekindled football. Football had closed at something like 19 years. Um, what's his name? Keynes had, yeah, Keynes had stopped football. The even wanted to make some Benedict's a, 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 a junior sec. You understand? Wow. So I came back and I started off. You know, I tell Keynes, I say, football at a start. Like, hey, I'm a PE teacher. You know, we need. I know he wasn't too pleased, but he couldn't do nothing about it. He had to, you know, because. And I started back from there. I bring back Benedict's and did football. And while I was coaching Benedict's, I remember Jack Rusing from Napoli asked me to come and coach his team. But they were in championships, so I could have done that. So I went and I coached. I took Leon St. Louis from Benedict's and I took him there to Naps. Because he was wasting time in Benedict's. Benedict's playing senior grade. Yeah. Nobody in looking at senior grade games. And these guys were, you know, pretty good. So I took him. Goalkeeper went to press. Sean, it had a guy named Sean, used to go mud sec. Well, he always used to train with my annex and with me, juniors. Press. So I, I, I sort of split it, you know, shared. And these guys did well, you know, they did well. And I remember now, when the scholarship part of it is while playing with Sunjets of New York. We were sponsored by BWI. We had players like Squeaky Hines from Port of Spain. We had Delbert Charlo, not Delbert Charlo, but um, Dol Griffith. We had players from Port of Spain, national players. We had a nice little team. Work. And I met this guy, Black Panther. 
he used to say for West Ham. And he was our keeper. So I asked him, I said, um, what you doing? He said, well, he's at Rutgers and coaching. I said, what? I said, I have two players for you, man. So I sent my cousin, Williams, and Rajkumar, for them scratch. Well, they had, they had the, um, the education background to go to university. So they were able to go. Yeah. So I sent them out there, and I started all that. But when I returned to Trinidad, not too long, I decided, hey, I will continue this. And there it is. I spoke to um, Reginald Renwick. That was a cousin of mine. So he was teaching Benedict. He was a head of registrar in Howard University. And I told him, I said, listen, I have two players for you next two years. They know in Form 3, Romano Paul and Ivan Sampson. I am molding these guys for Howard. He said, OK, all right, good. But then the following year, he came down to Trinidad with Don Basil when we had a graduation. And he gone run him out to sing, <laughs> Declan, and tell him about this. Declan jumped the gun and take the, take the, take the prize. So they sent this guy called Earl Etienne. Not, and he was thinking, Earl Etienne is the Etienne who used to play for Benedicts, was a speedy and a strong guy, but he didn't have that background, that education to go to a university. He was from La Romaine, but he got tied up with the name. And never asked me nothing. I couldn't say nothing because if I go to say, well, hey, Earl is not entitled, trying to get an academic scholar, he's bright, eh? I, I ain't taking that from him. But he's not a footballer at that level. They'll say, well, you know, you're trying to block a youth from going up to the state. You know, we train other them people's so I, I went to we with it. Hey, hey, I'm in school one day. My class principal called me. Mr. Stedman, come to the office when I go on. The first thing he'll tell me, you know, the coach of Howard called me just now there and telling me that we, we sent a fish. <laughs> and he started laughing, kick, 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 kick. I said, Mr. Singh, no, hold it. You know what you just did there? I said, I got screwed. And the school got screwed. I said, because America don't make joke enough. Anytime people who are recruiters making that kind of thing, they block you off. They don't want you again because you don't know what you're doing. And that was a joke for him. That was no joke for me. I was serious. Yes. Romano Paul now, Ivan Sampson, and a guy named Lalu and Lal Chan from La Prima, and Aliba from Benedict, who went to ben, um, Naps to do A's. They were top players. Came right downstairs by me and write up a form for Howard. They got blank. And the reason why they got blank is because of this Etienne guy. And Reggie and his thing. Well, eventually they got rid of Reggie as register to get rid of him. So that closed up. Then I had this friend of mine, but a guy I taught him Benedict's, he's a dentist now in, in, in Wash in, in Atlanta. And he was the guy who went out there. He loved football, still into football, coaching and thing. He coached the um, Atlanta national team. And we started working on this scholarship. And the first guy I sent out there after was a guy named um, Bristol from Naparima. He went out there and he did well. And everything there was our history after. Men like Mac Knight from Naps, from junior, he came from a junior sect into, he went to um, Claxton Bay High and then he went to Naparima. I started coaching him as a youth in junior sect. Kufa, a friend told me to come and help him out. So I used to go and do a thing with him too, you know. And he came to Naps, 1480 was good for him. Spanson was to come with us, but they got rid of Span, so like he didn't want that, he went to Benedict's. And all these guys came, police and them came from um, Leon, um, forget his name, but you know, called nickname police. Leon was his name. He was from Separia. He was the captain of the team. He was a junior sex student too. But when I was going to Naparima now, Naparima had some bright guys, Sam Lal Singh and this one and T. Steele, they were bright fellas. 
African and Indian, but everybody moving in one, you know, around me, everybody's one. Yeah. And I used to tell them, yeah, you see those guys? I don't want them for one season or two seasons. I want them for three. They must go to sixth form. Six one and six two. Then they are mature to go out. So here was happening. Every lunchtime, you take them up in their work. And I assign them to them. And anybody who don't come, just report to me because I wasn't teaching there. I teach in Benedict's. I go down to the ground. I reach down there about half a street. And who will report to you all to learn? I get them off the, car, off the team. I cut them off the team. Well, they know I was serious about that. Mm -hmm. So these guys went and they did the thing. And they were able to go on scholarship. Now, we were a uh, uh, sort of like for connection. Because that time, John Williams was the man who was sponsoring Naparima. And I remember when we went to play them a practice game at time. He looked at Leon and he looked at Bailey and these guys and want them to play. And Mark Knight, I said, no, 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 no. Those guys, they are earmarked for scholarship. They are scholarship material. We can't keep them here to play no professional football here. I don't know where the football is going. You understand? I know they were mad with me. I couldn't get us what it said. Because I wanted to get something for these guys. Yeah, the, best. the best. And they went out and they did well. Police is a coach right now outside in America coaching girls. Mark Knight came back home. He has his own coaching school. And who is out there now working? They say, they, they, they tell me when I go out and look for them, they say, hey, you could have been a millionaire over here, John, boy. We make it. I said, well, if I was here, how you would have been here? <laughs> you understand? I said, that was the sacrifice. Even my green card went through because of that. You know, I could be running up and coming down. But no, when school closed, I had to stay and coach. I wanted to go scholarship, so I lost out on all of that. That didn't mean no different to me, you know? I was done kind of like, I didn't like the cool already. And all that was history, right? But the whole thing about it, I remember they asked me to play, the, 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 to come for a tryout. They, uh, they wanted coaches for the national team, so they had this interview. But my team, I was coaching up at the time, and we had a game at 3 o'clock. The interview is 2.30. So weeks, Winfield weeks. Midfield. Midfield weeks, yes. That is my, 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 you know, I know him from small, his whole family and thing, and he decided, look, I will go as your manager because you can't be two places one time. I said, beautiful, I was thankful for that. And he went up to the meeting. Edgar Vidal was the man in charge sharing the meeting. He said, Jana, when I told him, look, I come to represent you, Granville from Tobago, jump up on board, I supposed to be here and all this kind of thing, and, da, 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 and like he was the man chairing the meeting. You know, eventually Granville ended up coaching the team. Yeah. You know something? His brother came to Trinidad. And like I say, with Phoenix, his brother was the goalkeeper with us in Phoenix. When he was in the States and we went to these different places, his brother was the And his brother came with a white guy and they took over the team. Just like that. They, they didn't well. They didn't do well at all. Then while I was in Trinidad now, Cummins called me to play with the, with the Shell squad. When I went to the Shell squad now, just imagine you have a drop out of the army, which was, um, what's his name, boy? He died now. God rest his soul. He was a coach. They had me as assistant coach. And they had an next college university graduate, which was, um, he's a coach, St. Augustine. I'm a real partner. As a, as a trainer. And we were the two people. That time St. Augustine was ripping to her. Eh? Okay. When we returned home, the co one of the assistant coaches was supposed to go to Germany. They end up sending the trainer me. Because I got a bad report. And the report I got is from a, this white guy called um, Peter Stone. He was the manager of the team. 
And what happened that day, we were, we were in training in the, in the stadium. And this guy used to play with Queen's Park because they're all Queen's Park people. You know, that click. They had a team called Real Devils or whatever. And this guy called Godfrey Lake. Something happened between the two of us now. And I kind of pull him up. And he went to complain. Let's imagine you're a player, you go, into the, you go into the manager to complain about a coach. And you had the idea to come to me to tell me about it. So I told him, I said, listen, I am a coach. He's a player. You shouldn't be asking me these questions. I think you're out of place. And as a matter of fact, you are not my age. I am elder than you, so I'm not taking that from you, Mr. Peter Stone. And I know he wasn't pleased with that. I know he wasn't pleased with that. So that was a bad record I got from him. So when it comes to picking the coach now, they left me out. I didn't lose anything because when the coach came back, he built all the literature and everything for me that they did. And when I started going through my literature, I realized the things I was doing as a physical education teacher, these are the same methods they were using to do their thing. And that just made me stronger in what I was doing because everything was there in a nutshell. And I, always, I, 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 I started thinking, I said, listen, you know, each coach in Trinidad is supposed to have a degree in physical education. They will know what they're about, nutritional, injuries. They have a whole wide scope of all these things. But I said, look, keep it a secret. Don't say anything because you know Trinidadian people. They will say, just because you have a degree, rah, 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 rah. so I just stay my way and I did my thing. Then I went and did the photo course. I got my degree, I, my, my um, badge to coach. And then years after, I met Cummins in the park, he and Grayson. They were coaching San Fernando Strikers. I had my coaching school in the park. And he came and he said, John, you're the man. And I said, I am the man. What happened? I said, so how come you put me as assistant coach to drop out from the army? You played professional, I played professional. How you could have done me that? You know, he told me to tell me. Jack Warner, I start to laugh. Yeah, I laugh and I walk away. So this is something that was going on with me. Next thing you know, Naja came into the play. No, it wasn't Naja first. Naparima played St. Anthony in the Oval, in the Hazy Crawford Stadium. Sorry. And after the game, he beat them 2 1. That time Kevin Jones was playing with them. He was really a defender. Eh? He was no forward. And he came on TV and said he saw a team playing and he wanted to know who is the coach, who is this coach who coach a team, bam, bam, bam. Well, apparently he got in touch with me. I went to an interview with them. He and his assistant interviewed me. He said, well, listen, I'm giving you the under 17 team. Because he said, I like the work I see those guys doing, the progress and whatever. I said, okay. And then about a month or two after, politics started coming into the football with Jack Warner. Decided, look, he ain't paying him no more. He called him on Patrick Manning to pay and all this kind of thing. But I always knew that Jack was going to run for government sometime. I always say that to people tell me, no, Jack in Trinidad, you know. Jack from Cayenne, French Guiana. There is a Nigerian who went to France. That was the place they used to send all the bright people who get trouble in Cayenne. Yeah? Never to return to France. So these people were bright people. Jack, well, I tell a man, I say, Patrick, I want to know Jack. I, know. I say, boy, I say, boy, I tell you, I do research on this man. I was the only footballer and New Orleans, Sami, did research on Jack Warner. We had. I know one person in Trinidad could have spoken seven different languages, Don Basil Matthews. He was a scholar. Tell a guy named Fanchet. He was a, a 
one of those um, referees in, 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 in boxing, Francis Moore. Moore, he told me Dr. William Five. I didn't know. He was a scholar. Where does Bob Bookman come out from? With seven languages fluently. You understand? Cayenne is French. Suriname is Dutch, right there. Yeah. You from Nigeria, you know Nigerian. You grew up in that family. So these languages is nothing for you. It's only when you learn English you catch your tail to learn other languages. And that is what they did to us as Africans. Yeah, they sink with that. But these fellas had their, you know, the original way of speaking, and they learn. When I tell people that, this is carpet, they laugh at me and say, boy, John the Dora and kicks off. But I just leave it like that because he didn't understand where I was coming from, you know? So there it is. Naja came on the plane now and called me from New York, from America. He said, John, I have something for you. Because he didn't know I was in Trinidad until one day. Dr. Elias took me up to the treetop with him and we went to have a little beer. And he said, you're in Trinidad? Then about three months after he called me, he said, I have something for you, can I refuse? I said, what is that? He said, I'm going to put you on the under-19 team. Yeah. You and Franco. Now, that is the same Franco who told me as a youth. Carlton? Nah, Carlton is his brother. Carlton was, well, he used to play in Malvern. He was the biggest run. But like, like when I was playing professional, Carlton came and looked for us when we was in Vancouver. We went to play Vancouver and he came and looked for us. But um, his brother, he said, you all will coach the, the under 20 team. Yeah. Naja told us that um, he wanted us to coach a team. But then he played three games with the national team and lost all three. And he decided to call it quit. It's as though both of us had to quit too because nobody came back to us. We heard nothing about it. So that went down the drain. That was the only experience I had up to this time. But then I, I had my little coaching school going on, sending guys on scholarships and things like that. But then I realized the youths here wasn't taking it seriously. And about four years ago, I made up my mind to call it quit. And the reason for that is that I had a coaching school going on, and other guys were going to other schools, spending this big set of money, not learning anything. And I was the cheapest. But then this guy came from Philadelphia. His mother came down a day and saw me, his aunt. And said, listen, my nephew is coming down to Trinidad for three weeks, and I want him to get enrolled in this program. I said, OK. And he came that summer, and he, telling me, he told me he's a point guard. And I started to teach him the fundamentals, the keep-ups, and things like that. And at the end of the two weeks, the things that guy was doing, I turned to my guys and said, look at that. You all are with me for so many years. And you all can keep up the ball for 10, for 20, for 30. Look at him. Because every time he has a chance, he's practicing. The kicks, the turn. So that evening, we decided to play with them. That morning, in fact, they came the morning with the red jersey. I want to know why these guys come in with red jersey. I don't have red jersey in my coaching school, you know. But I know, I realized everybody who was in the coaching school during the week in the camp, they came with red jersey. They knew it was a plan they had. And at the end of the day, we want to play those guys, the regulars who come in every Saturday, who didn't come. So I said, okay. I ain't lying to you, man. When they put on some football and these guys, these guys who were there, some of them was bigger than them too, and they're shocked because I told them, I said, listen, Saturday is just to keep you in, you know, in tune. But when you come during the week, it's individual training. You learn more things. The morning you do the skills and everything, and in the evening then you practice what you learn. So you get a chance to perform. And that's how these guys picked up. You know something? At the end of it, 
I started to play with them in the game. And I put a screen on the same youth man who came. And he, his, my elbow ran straight into his face. And that guy turned on and ball. it's the screen, it's the screen. And I was so amazed, you know, like, normally a guy from Trinidad get a lash in the face, he holy face and ball. He realized it's my screen that caused him to get out. He shouldn't have run in there. And I look at that and I say, wow. He pick it up. Because you spread. When you spread, you keep people away from you. If they run in, they run into your elbow. And I said, you know something? I am wasting my time. Because I go to the, school, to the States and I work with Ivan Sampson. We started a coaching school there from, since in 2002. And the kind of result he's getting, it's unbelievable. That guy called Riley, who's playing for presentation right now. He was with Connection, with Brian Williams and these guys. And they took him. And he went up to Ivan's school, New Holidays, his father, sacrificed. And today he's one of the top players in presentation. But he's small in size. His father was a small guy too. Father run and won the 800 in Karefta and thing, you know. That is the kind of talent. And a talent. Lot of people is a small yeah, guy too. Skills. You understand? But when I look at what the, the guys he was training with out there is 11 and 12 years old. Which is his age. He's not his age. He was 17. But he looked like them in size. They're small like him. But this is 13 and 12 and he's 17. And the kind of training they were doing. He had to step up to the plate. And when you watch him playing with the presentation today, you could see he's a cut above the rest. But he's already marked a mark for um, Washington, D.C. have some youth program, some that they're going to eat the trials for already. So, you know, this is what's happening. Like this morning, I went to the bank, and a guy told, told me, um, I went to get a statement. He said, uh, you don't know who you're talking to? I said, no. You see, you taught me in Benedict as a PE teacher. And my name is so and so and so and so. He said, um, I want you to coach my son. I said, well, How old is your son? He said, My son ain't born yet. <laughs> he said, But he's on the way. <laughs> I started to laugh. He said, He's on the way. I said, Well, boy, if you know, if you know something. I went to a brunch yesterday and I met guys there and they're telling me, Boy, I have. Two young boys want uh, you have to coach them. I don't want nobody else to coach these guys. He said, My cousin, right now he's a doctor today. And you changed his whole life in doing things with him, you know. The kind of discipline you put in him and the, the skills that he learned and the game. I just laugh, you know. I say, Well, boy, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I don't know yet. If I still want to get back into that. Because you see, the, the whole thing about it is you need good facilities. You need good gongs to, to train these youths. When you go to Skinner Park, Skinner Park and Rainfall, you can't do it. I feel like um, you can't play. It's too muddy, you know. You know, it's too muddy. So these are the things I look at. We need to get something better than that here, if we really want to mold the youths into better footballers, right? To teach them the fundamentals, which is not happening. We, are, we have too many coaches here who are not of that level. And they are, I don't know, I call them sort changing the yachts. Yeah, they sort changing them. They're not learning the proper. So it's hard for a coach. When a coach come to you and want to coach a youth who don't know the fundamentals and don't know his role as a player, it's hard for a coach. So all these coaches they bring here, I want to coach the national team. They, they have they have a problem because the, the, the players are not at that level. This is what you learn from small. You don't just learn it by osmosis, right? So I decided, look, let me pack up. I go to the states and I do my thing. I enjoy that, but I don't know. I'm still thinking about it. Now coming back to Sonatas now, with my good old friend, God bless his soul. Steel Orchestra. Um, I came home in 79, the ending of 79. 
I was always a front player player. So I went to the national team. I went to practice in the evening, and there I saw this guy. I didn't know him. With the glasses on, his small glasses. Hello, hello, hello. Small glasses on. And I started to talk to him. But when I heard how he was playing the span, I decided, hey, this man is sounding like Rudin, you know. Very close. Rudin Yeah. He was the arranger then. So not no, no. When I came back home. Oh, came back yeah. Home. Right. And it was professional. But the people used to be making a muck out of him. They're doing him all kind of thing. Men pulling off his cap and trip. Trevor Horn and Gulch and him going. I stop all of that because I fit. I bad. <laughs> because that can happen to somebody with that kind of talent. I stop all of that. Yeah. I say, you know I live in? I hit up the road behind Karma, check me out. And he, well, he, he was living by me. When I say living, he wasn't sleeping, but every day from morning, that time I wasn't working as yet. I had a tenner in the corner right there. We like to I'm right downstairs here. And a day, a friend of mine came down, Geoff Raphael. We all senators. And he said, John, are you looking for a ranger? I said, you're looking for a ranger? He said, yeah, I'm looking for a ranger. I said, well, that time, pro line with me. I cut pro dread downstairs here. He had a little picky head dread, I cut it. I took him horse racing with me, and the guy was in the horse racing with me. We went to the bar. And he said, but you want a ranger? So look him here. I had a friend named Garvin Thompson. He's the one who really see that spirit in pro. And he said one day to him, he said, you're the man, you know. I've been praying for that, to have an arranger like you. He said, Boogsy and Jit, they ain't giving us the music to beat the tongue bands. He said, but you have to be arranging for a band like Fun Clear, a big band. And it happened in 85. He got the call. Rudin was sick and he had his call. They called him to finish the tune, which he did. A lot of people was, wasn't too pleased when they said he's going to finish the tune. But he did a good job. And then he went from there. Everything was history. So he went to America. I sent him to Sonatas. And there he made his name. He came out as a... Um, when he won about five or six panoramas out there. And everything after that was history. Well, God bless his soul, he came and he died. Accident. And I know we're going to miss him. And that's the history of my life. I am still around. I still try to help other people, still try to get guys on scholarship, but they have to know the time. They have to be prepared and ready. Look the guy who went to Benedict, the two guys who went from Benedict and Prez and got an accident. That can happen with the guys I sent away, that never happened to them, because I will talk to them and let them know. I will let them know you know, you're going in a strange country. You can't be joyriding with other people and things like that. And they go with prayers. You don't go just like that. But how much people doing that? They send the train out there just so, you know. And a guy asks me, he say, how come when you send guys away, they, they finish school and they're not dropping out, you know. Like just recently, my dentist friend called me and tell me, he say, hey, you know something? A guy got a five-year scholarship, a four-year scholarship, full scholarship from presentation named Bass. He went up there and he said that um, the coach sent him 15 minutes to play and he said the coach didn't like him. He decided to come home. And then he came and he tell his parents something about he had some injury in his throat or something like that. I said, but the right is place to get an um, operation to see about is out there with that. So I can't understand that. That is what he told them. But then when I got it from the, my, my resource, it's something different. So he made bad for us, other players getting out there for scholarship. Because it was a full scholarship he got. You know? So this is what I'm trying to tell these people here in Trinidad. You have to be on the ball. You have to know what you're about. Don't let 
that opportunity fail. You understand? Don't let that opportunity fail. But that's how it is. John, what do you consider to be the high point in your career? The high point in my career is when I played against the greatest player on this team. Pele. Our club. Pele, you mean the Brazilian, the Brazilian number one? Pele number one. Wow. We played against his, his team, Santos. New York Generals played Santos. We won that game. We were the only team in the NFL that won against Santos. Really? Archibald scored two goals on that game. Warren Archibald. That team was comprised of seven players on the 1970 World Cup team. This was 68 I'm talking about. Two years after, they won the World Cup in Mexico with Carlos Alberto and these guys. And hey, I couldn't believe that was going to happen. And it happened. That was the most memorable thing that came to me in my mind that I always dream of. I always think about it. And it was so, it was like out of, out of this world, being able as a local to play against Pele. And I was so happy. I even took out a picture with him, Archibald, and Co-Prince from Holland. He was the next one. And you know something? Those were the two players who, who worked, who were, um, at, they acted in, I don't know, if you are aware of Escape to Victory, it's a picture they had with Saloon as a captain, as a goalkeeper, Sylvester Saloon as a goalkeeper. They had Pele, Bobby Charlton, Bobby Moore, the top players in the world at the time. And co prince who played with us in that picture I have there, he was one of two of them, Pele and the other two. The only two who didn't play was Archibald and myself from that picture. So that is something I always cherish. I always have that in my memory bank. I will never forget those moments. That was the height of my career. Okay. On the other hand, is there a moment in your career that you will never, never like to relive? <laughs> Put you on the spot. Mm -hmm. Playing with my team in New York that I coach and getting an injury that is still there in me today. What team is this? It was Pan, no, it was Trinbago. Team Trinbago. And we were playing a final in Boys High. Just came from playing professional, so I was fit. And this guy came up and hit me a kick just like that. And that was the end of my foot. My foot ended up with a cartilage up to this day. I never did anything about it, and up to this day, it still bothers me. That's and I always say I will never want to experience something like that again. 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 And I wouldn't like nobody to experience something like that. That's not the same team that doubled up as Sonatas? As Sonatas. That's the same team that doubled up as Sonatas. Yeah. It was a, yeah. And after that, we went to the still one. Yeah. Yeah. And I say I will never like that to happen to me. That is why I hate minor league football. That is why when I coach him, and the guy asks me to join minor league teams, and to, I say no, I have no discipline in that football. And I know plenty of people who got injured playing the minor league. So I end up coaching, just coaching in the fiber world. And that is one experience, like I said, I will never want to get. Okay, on a, a sad moment, did you have a relationship with deceased Ken Professor 
full film Ooh, mm. Professor Filmo, sad, sad, sad. Yes, I met him in 80 when I returned home. I went down to Funclair, which I was a player of Funclair. And I reached home, I went home, I went down there to listen to the band rehearse. And while outside I hear this tenor playing and this guy soloing, I seen but wait now. This guy sounding like Rudin, Austin. But Rudin wasn't in the band yet that night. That night. Who is this guy? And when he came out and I look at the guy, I say, wow. So then I asked him, I say, where did you learn to solo like that? And his word to me was butters. Now I remember Butters playing with fun play. Bartholomew. Bartholomew. Who was his first name? I can't remember. And his brother was Michael. Um, I can't remember exactly what okay, his first but Butters, name. okay. Butters, yeah. yeah. And he was a player. I remember when I had to leave here in Trinidad to go back to the States in 68. After Juve morning, I sat down and cried and he's the one who came and consoled me. A youth, he was a youth. Butters. Yeah, because I didn't want to leave Juve morning. I recall while I was the manager of Pleasantville Senior Comprehensive School Steel Band, Butters was the man in charge of arranging and then Pro came and took over. Okay. Yeah. Well, that was Pro teacher in soloing. Okay. And Pro showed me that. So then I took, I look at him and say, you know where I live? He said, yeah, I said, well, check me out. But at that time, people used to be making a muck out of him, doing him, putting tail behind his, you know, turning him when he turned like, over a tail. I support all that. Guys used to take off his hat and all this kind of thing, for he had a picky head dry, dread. I cut it home by me, I cut it, and I took him in hand. I stopped all of that. But he like made me nobody come around with no stupidness. Right, right. Because I didn't used to make joke with them kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And he started to get his respect from there. And then I took him to horse racing in the evening with me, in Union Park. And there I met my friend who came down from the States, Senators. And he said, John, we just fired the, 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 the Our Ranger. We went Panorama. And there it is, this man want more money than what he bargained for and whatever. We get rid of him. We're looking for an arranger. And Pooh was on the spot. Mm. Right? Now I knew he could play the pan because that year, Funkler got four road tunes. Four road tunes. And that was by Professor. Yeah. When Rudin came to give us his panorama tune, they didn't like his tune. So Rudin said, okay, let me hear what all they have. Tell them was one of them, by Shadow. He said, well, this is the best tune he took, and he took it. And he played out for panorama. But it was a tune against the judges. <laughs> so we got a happy juve. Yeah. Is it judges jumping? Yeah, yeah judges jumping. Yeah, Kashin Hell and Kevin jumping, yeah. Washington. And we play that tune, yeah. And we got a happy juve. We used to tell you that on the score sheet. Happy juve, which means you're out of and everything you're done. You wait until oh. juve. Oh. <laughs> so that was it. So everybody blamed Pro for that. But yeah. there's nothing that Pro gave us road tunes. So you say Fontaine won the panorama? No, what? no, no. What? We got we got throughout. Thrown out? Yeah, thrown out okay, because okay. of that tune. Was it, be, was it when the, the times when Panorama and South was separated from North? Definitely. Okay. You understand? And we played to tell them, song real good, we didn't did a real good job there. Yeah. But, it was a protest tune. They okay. taking that. Okay. So they gave us a happy juve at the end of the score sheet. <laughs> so you, you, you ban, your pan yeah. like a ghost bye -bye. until Carnival <laughs> come. You understand? So these are the things we went through. And Pro went outside and he did well. He did well. He won five or six panorama. Yeah. Then he came back to front and he started arranging for front play, Which he was told by one of my friends. He said, hey, you see you? You're the man we're looking for. I pray to God to get an arranger like you to help us down here. He said, Jip, 
and Boogsy and gain us and gain um bell tones a between and just and gain you know, don't drop the beat tongue band. But they are ranging for tongue band, two bands. He said use the man, use the man, but they have to be ranging for a band like fun player, a big man. But he was not ranging for fun player. He was just a player. Right? They made me vice captain of the band that year. The following year we got away. Because they say I when I was a vice captain, I went and I did inventory with the band and pans that we need and and during that time pan was just moving on the pan yet. I had no say. Mm -hmm. But then people say I say they sold pan. <laughs> the owners. So it was a big thing for me. So I say after pan I remember that's it, because they treat me like a dog at that time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then when I say I'm gonna leave, Professor say he's leaving too. Ooh. That's how we end up in Hatters. And he did a good job with Hatters. Mm -hmm. I mean, they didn't win Panorama, they didn't, you know, but it sounded good. It was one of the first big band in Trinidad. And you know, the next year, Funkler called him to finish the tune because Rudin got sick. Okay. And that was the break. That was the break with Funkler. And that was the break my partner, Gong Gong, told him that he had to be playing with a big band from Funkler. Like a spirit hit him right there. <coughs> Sitting on right there, I spray like I said, the man tell him, hey, you, 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 man, but I always pray for a ranger, like, and after that, everything was just free. But the problem Pro did was, I told them to send him the music lessons, which was just across the street where he was living, yeah. in San Andreas, in New York. Yeah. He never did. And I think that was one of his dumb fault. But, you know, another school of thought said that that worked for him. Well, it worked for him because he, you see, he was a top, to me, he's the best Spanish to have, right? Go on a tenor and he will captivate a whole audience, yeah. a whole arena. Mm -hmm. But when coming to arranging, you now in arranging now, you have different instruments to give music to. Yeah. And if you don't have that scope, that musical, like Bradley was not a pan man, Bradley can't play a tenor. But he knew music. But he knew music. Zander couldn't play no pan, Zander and them fellas, they are keyboards men. They yeah. knew music. So they could distribute. So, yes. So if Pro had to change this part to this part, he might spin around and play about three, four, five, eight, two minutes trying to get yes. it. And they just do so. Plop, plop. And they get it going. Because they could read the score. Because they could read scores. Yeah. They could, you know, the notes that they will, you know. So it's, it's something that you must have. But then he came and he told me, Duke Wellington told him something that I couldn't believe that he about to know music. He could have, I said, you know, when he told me that, I, I took that with a pinch of salt. Mm -hmm. I said, because if he could tell you that, because he played with him, eh? I said, if he could tell you that, his music you want to know. He's a musician. He's Duke Ellington. I mean, you could play a tenor by air, but if you know music, you go further. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll go further with it. But he had that gift. He had that gift. And I always say, if he had music with him, they want to see where people going all along. Yeah. You want to catch him? Because he had that, that in him, that kind of flair in the music. Sweetness. He was that, and I told him the other day, I said, hey, why you in the tenants to play the music and we are custom playing? I said, don't follow them other guys, you are your own styling. But you see, he went on to get different styling, you know, following the other guys now, how they are arranging and you have your way of doing it. Pan here to stay. When you hear Pan here to stay, that was Professor. Everything you hear in your tenants running, you know. And I think he lost it there for the arranging part. Mm -hmm. But for the playing part in the pan, he's great. I think he's, he, he was the best I have. I don't want to put on the best tenor player I have, I always say. And the next man in his shoes is a guy called Dwight Belgo, which I figure out you know. Your neighbor across you? My neighbor. And different, eh? Yes, I did. He's solo, different, 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 different to prove. In, but he, he in wants Canada. a band bar down here, no? he wants a band bar down here, but I, he asked me the, last week about Sonatas, I said, but Sonatas is no, other, no, no more in existence, oh, okay. they're fighting war against the band and this one, so 
they wanted me to come up to the States to, to get involved. I said, no. I left there too late, too, too long. Mm -hmm. I am Marcus' friend and I am Kong Robin's friend. I don't want to get involved because Kong Robin is who gave him the band. Mm -hmm. I don't want to part of that. I don't want to get. I even sent Birch over there, Birch and Kelman, mm -hmm. to, 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 to tune the blend and thing they pan, make fun for them because they wanted um, Roy Gay. That time, what's his name? Randolph Hillier was the captain of the band. He had married to Roy Gay's sister. And they asked him to come and do some pan for them, for the panorama, and he left and went to Grenada. He blamed them. So they called me. I said, John. So I went up to Birch and we'll say he will take it up, and he went. Which in America to still every day he go the train out there. He had a daughter just die sometime. Birch? Yeah. Out there. Child boot or something like that. You know. So, you know, I I I it's a way that open. So when these guys tell me, Mr. Stedman, you should be not here making money and things, I say, Oh, you would have been out there if I wasn't out here. I wouldn't know you, you wouldn't know me. You know? So that's what the cookie crumble is. Again, um, these are the moments that I will always cherish. The good, the bad, <laughs> you know. Um, some of them again, I got and and fighted football too all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, as a coach, you had to stand up for your players, and I used to make joke of that. You know. You used to play those Jamaicans, the Jamaicans were very ignorant people, they want to fight you. And if you're beating them, they want to fight your team. They want to beat you and all this kind of thing. So I had to stand up for that. Archie used to come and play with me too. Yeah, we did well over there, man. We did well. But Cosmos, it's when I formed, when Cosmos formed in 71, I was one of the players there. One of the pioneers. After that, I started going to Brooklyn College. Before I get my degree, I started going there and Cummins came in after and played for Cosmos. He said, me wear the jersey I had, number 20. Ty Burnett was a keeper for them also. I don't know if you know Ty Burnett, the Milo man. He was one of our top players. He and our Lincoln were the two top players in China. Yeah. Keepers. And the rest of history. Yeah. You know? I remember you play, running with me in um, with Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember we used to be running in Brooklyn. And Crawford. He's the Crawford, well, he was the youth of us. Yes. Right? Brian Baker. Yeah. And you know, recently I just understand, um, five years ago, Brian Baker was telling me he was running under 12, but he was Crawford's age. Okay. But Crawford didn't want nothing with him. You understand? Mm -hmm. So he ran the age above and beating them there too. Like Silver Baker, son. Yeah. Silver Club Baker. Yeah. And he went to the army, he went out there, but these fellas never do running anymore. I, I don't know why they, you know. He was a top notch one. When you hear government school going to run, Crawford under 10, Ryan Baker under 12, nobody beat us there. Yeah. My dear looks in the upper division, but not down there. You know? And I remember Crawford when I came home in. 69, before I went back outside, I was coaching Trintoc, Texaco. The coach asked me to prepare them to go in Grenada. So I had the C's Remy working with me. And I there went to the sports shop. Yeah. I walked into the sports shop, sports bar, and I see this guy coming with the running shoes and the bag. What do you think it was? Rajpan, Crawford, Who? Crawford. Crawford. Right? So I asked him, I said, Coffee, what's going on? Thin and tall. So what's going on now? He's down in a um, power gen, somewhere down there, penal, doing high jump, that and looking apprentice. With. And I turn around and I tell him, I say, hey, let me tell you something. I know Karacha playing Timberlees in Young One Combo. Yeah, boy, the pole. That's my boy. Yeah. He was no runner in school time when we running. 
and he, he took because he went in an apprentice and he started running thing. I say, you have that natural boy, go back to running boy, one to you boy, high jump. He listened to you? I hear what happening. I leave and I gone away. I 69. That's around April, so I tell you that. I leave and I go back up in September. The following year, Jeff Lewis, Jeff, Jeff Farrell, the Farrell brothers is right. Yes, I'm glad. He had a sugar, a sugar head one named yeah. Jeff. Yeah. He came up to the States. But every time they come to the States, everybody used to come by Jan. Jan is the man taking them out here, bar my thing. Yeah. And he bought a clipping for me from Southern Games where Crawford beat um, Pee Wee. Edwin Skinner, Edwin Roberts in the hundred in, in Southern Games. And I bought. I in the train about ah! people look at me like this man going mad, but they know I was a victory for yeah, you. Yeah, victory for me. Yeah. And then I remember I go home a day and I get a phone call. Hey John, I say who's that? Is I say Hazley? Wait, wait, wait. But I I I I New York boy. I see you in New York way. He got a scholarship and he was going to school somewhere down in, um, in the south. But during the holidays, he'll come up to New York. You understand? I said, all right, that's cool, you know? And then we used to converse and thing with each other. Me, you know, when he come to New York, we talk and thing. And I remember 1975, <laughs> I read Sun Jets. Like I told her, I used to be with Sun Jets. When Uta used to be with us, when I got the job for them. Uta was with Sun Jets, something like that, you know? <coughs> and we had this every Saturday we used to have before Labor Day. Labor Day Saturday we used to have a tournament. We didn't used to play, we just used to host the tournament. So many like Carl Archer coming from Canada, this one coming from this team coming from it's a whole it was a nice camaraderie thing we used to have there. And I standing up by this time and I got a shove from behind my back. And with that shove, here I am. You feel you could beat me now? And I go, no, I was, I had a little size, I guess more now. And I go forward and I turn around. When I turn around and I watch, he's the, is he is here. He and PV together, he and um, Edwin Roberts, they always used to hang out together. The man looked like Bob Hayes. I know if you remember Bob Hayes. The teacher? Bob Hayes was around, who came to Trinidad and run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is he looking like Bobby is boy? And I turn around and I tell him, I say, hey, they can't beat you, boy. Just for now. And that same Labor Day, that was the Saturday, the Labor Day Sun, um, the Monday, he and PB have one, um, they dress up with, um, like, baby Dapa and the baby, <laughs> two of them, two big strong men in this kind of, mm -hmm. they, they look like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 when they started doing the thing, that's to me, they was the only two just up so, boy. Yeah. Kick, you know, like the kick stick, boy. I say, wow. And then the next following year, you went on the winning world, um, the 76 Olympic. I just know it's a small world, how things happen, you know? It's 761. Yeah. I remember I was in, in London that, that year, and I was with my girlfriend. She been in, and I tell him, my girlfriend, he used to run with this guy. Yes. Yes, and I happy boy. Yes, man. My homeboy. Yeah. My gold medal boy. Gold medal boy. Even Vance and then the Vance. Vance and, 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 and uh, what's the guy from Jamaica name? Who goes? Forget his name. He was the, he was the 200 bucks. The motorized in Calypso. Yeah, he was the 200 man. Um, yeah. But he's the man who set up the whole program for Jamaica now. That's why Jamaica. And you see, this is what we did wrong in Trinidad. Our athletes never they never use the athletes who went out there and got the exposure. Mm -hmm. Like take for instance the kind of thing I did and went up to, they never use us as coaches here. Mm -hmm. So we can come out give with what back. I give back to my colleges and then because of what I know. That is why my college was always at top. We never go to do it to the national team. Jamaica set up a program. I and think, it's still going on. I think what worked for Jamaica too is that the Cubans. They engage the Cubans to work with their athletes. And they have a higher altitude than us, eh? Yeah. So they are more into, you know? Mm -hmm. And we, 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 we feel there, but you know, I mean, like, 
We have good athletes. But the hand is in. Is what we, know. we have raw talent here now. Raw talent. Yeah. Alright, so. That's about it. If you had to send a message to a lot, a lot of these young fellas who just there lining on the block, what would it be? There's so many things out there for them. You know, there's so many things out there for them. When I was their age, they didn't have much. So we took athletics or soccer. It has so many things out there for them. They can get into the art form. They can study the school world. They can go on scholarship. They can do it. It's open. And there's avenues out there for them. They just have to tap in into those avenues. But apparently people don't get them aware of these things. Mm. Or apparently they don't read and things like that. Now in school, I used to let them know, get them away. Mm. I don't know if the teachers do it because most of the teachers who are teaching they never go nowhere. You understand? They stay in training that system, bam bam, they go back in the teaching. I was outside, so I know what to expect and what is all, you know. Mm. So I had a, a, a broader scope of what's going to happen and what you should do to reach. And that's what's happening. We need, we, they need to focus on what they're doing too. They don't really focus on what they're doing. And you have to love what you're doing. You understand? You have to love it with a passion. These fellas don't matter. And I mean, if the coaches are things still that in them, you know, that is what I did to my players. My players coming from all down in the countryside and all kind of stuff. I hide them. I talk. Most of the guys who I send on scholarship, right? Like, it's guys from the country. How many guys from the town went for scholarship? Ivan Sampson, maybe this guy, um, Daly Son, um, Mac Knight. But all the rest is from Chatham, Faisabad, from there. Why? They were more focused. Mm -hmm. They were hungry for it. When you need tongue, you got too much distraction. You understand? Yeah. And, 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 and it's a bad thing. And next thing I used to tell you something too. They didn't want people to try and play in the pan. Yeah. But that opens up your intellect. When you could play pan you and you focus just like how you focus. And I do, I did that to people trying and they thank me after. I say, see the same way you focus and play in that pan? Focus on your school the same way and you'll see the difference. Not that alone. And they I, come back and tell me that time. Not that alone. I couldn't play pan when I was in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. I learned to play pan in England. Right? But my cutting edge was the pan. Mm -hmm. I, I work in Nigeria, Botswana, but the pan made a difference to me, mm -hmm. the people I encountered. I hear you. You understand? So, if you are a Trini, and you're going abroad to study or to live, make sure you can play your national instrument. Look what happened in um, Japan just recently. Hmm. Our girls went there to play netball or hmm. something, mm -hmm. and they were greeted in the airport with Japanese playing See, pan right. for them. Right. And I asked a question, how many girls in our contingent here could, could, could play, play a pan? Exactly, wonderful. And I watch these girls and them coming to front play, coming to phase two, coming to those different bands. And they know they're tuning their own tenor. See they're that. making their own pan. Really? Yeah. Wow. And coming down with it. Mm -hmm. My partner who played Desper said, Jack, he teaching one of them a run and miss a note. And she said, hey, you, you left out that note or not? But he doing something that like you, with your air, mightn't realize he missed it. Mm. He skate. Yeah. He said, you missed the note. He said, you watch it. When she tell him, he watch her so. You know? He's shocked. Yeah, you're shocked. He admit to me. He said, John, I'm a shock. Are you really scared the note? He said, nobody didn't want to teach her the pan to play. Because she was kind of like, she would, and he, you know, I made a calypso, eh? and one of the words in the calypso is, teach a kid to play a pan, show him the formation, 
show him how to place his hand. Make sure he understand. That is all I ask of you, Panis, to execute your skills in front of the children. So let Pan Music take control. Pan will really rock this world. And that is one of the main things I see because I see the Dyke Bell Wolf too. Execution. Where you position your hand. Mm -hmm. Instead of hitting a run from here, you hit it from here. It becomes easier. Instead of you crossing. Simple. And this is what Woody, my partner, he teach people like that. And Dwight showed him that. It's Dwight who teach him that. And when they pass on that player, the player get better than them. Boy. You feel me? You see, but my, them players do think that I had to watch it when I was there, so I couldn't do it. But I teach them, so they learn that. But it, they say, anytime the person you taught becomes better than you are, it means yeah. you are a good teacher. Very good teacher. And I, Very always, good teacher. I always pass on that to fellas. Yeah, you but my student. You have to make <laughs> your student better than you. All right, there you are now. Thank you very much, sir. Well, this has been a conversation with Jan Stedman and Hollis Clifton. Thank you. Yeah, this is what I got from St. Bernard's College, Jan Stedman. Thank you for appreciation, Mr. Stedman, on retirement for long service and the progress in teaching. This year is St. Benedict's College. You get a better picture of it here. Championship team. You see Rondon, Kenny Joseph, Warren Archibald, Dillion. This is Jan sitting on here. This is Bronner, Don Basil, Adrian Chandler, Wilfred Cave, Bidwells. Mm -hmm. This is the team that I coach in Benedicts with Ivan Sampson. We won out the thing. Don Basil is in the back there with Dave Ruben. I am the coach here and the gongs man, Gongzi. Neverson, Ivan, Martin Jordan, Benjamin, that was one of the first guy who went on scholarship. Next to me there. Sinclair. This was government school when I first started off as a youth. And it Andrew, was co-educational then? Yeah. Andrew, who played with me in Benedict's with Bobby Sukum and Arons. his guys. Yeah, New York Generals. Right, when I played, this is me here. I was the only black guy on the team that day. You are the general then? Yeah, <laughs> I was the general at that time. And then this is the picture we played with Pele, Santos. That's their color. This is me standing here next to Pele. This is co prince Archibald. Mm -hmm. right. And then we have the awards here. So these are my children and, you know, my daughter who got married right now. She's in um, Hong Kong doing acting and singing. This is my biggest daughter here, yeah, this. This is their mother. That's my biggest daughter, husband, my friend in New York, and that's me there. Yeah. And that's their mother, the, the husband. Yeah. This award here was given to me from um, Atlanta. The Bandix old boys from Atlanta. Right? That was sent to me. For what I did for them, the achievement. What I don't have is Naparima, which I have to put it maybe, I might have it up there. And this year was fun play. But I did it. Then I have one on top there. This is where the guys I coach in Benedicts. I taught them there. The guy I coach and taught in Benedicts. They call themselves Benedict Loyals. They had a big thing in the, um, <clears throat> in the park one day and they gave those trophies to me. I was given this by the College League. As a coach. Trinidad and Tobago College League. Yeah, and this was from the College League also.
Ministry of Sports achievement. Mm -hmm. And the rest I have it inside, I haven't really, you know, put them out as yet. But this was all of my achievement. Mm -hmm. These are trophies that I won in Brooklyn College, intramural sports. You know, they run in athletics. I was a good athlete too. I did good triple jump. Hmm. 46 6. Do you know what you have, you have not done as yet? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Man of all waters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, Jan, thank it was nice thank having you this conversation thank you, with thank you. you. Thank you, And I'll see you on another day and another time. Anytime. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir.